Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Molecular Biology. Here in this video, I am going to discuss the DNA structure and chromosome. All informations necessary for growth and survival is stored in an organism's genetic material. It is faithfully copied and transmitted to the progeny generation after generation. Any error occurred during its copy formation or equal distribution among two daughter cells may lead to disease condition. Not only that, our current knowledge about this unique material helps us to understand why some diseases are heritable, why changes in the genetic material can cause disease, and how to cure them. That's why scientists from the different countries work hard to discover its chemical nature and behavior. Some of the important discoveries that helps us to understand its chemical nature and structures are discussed here. But due to the shortage of the time, I have discussed only those discoveries from which you can expect some numerical problems in your exam, like Chargaff's rule, Watson Creek BDNA structure, chromosome structure. Here, only nucleosome model is discussed. For most of the organism, the genetic material is DNA except few viruses. The four nitrogenous bases, that is adenosine, thymine, guanosine and cytosine present in DNA and their position along the helix retain the informations. Genes or segment of DNA that code for a particular protein are arranged side by side one after another that control our phenotype. In 1940, Arvind Chargoff found that all four bases are not arranged randomly in the DNA. Rather, he found a particular pattern and it's called Chargoff's rule. He analyzed genetic material of various organisms and found that base composition is unique for a particular organism. But there is a correlation between the percentage of adenosine and thymine and guanosine and cytosine. He found that adenosine is always equals to thymine and guanosine is always equals to cytosine in all organisms and the total amount of purine is equal to pyrimidine. These two relationships are called Chargoff's rule. Using this rule, you can easily calculate the percentage of three other bases if we know the percentage of a single base. In this numerical problem that appears in this exam, the percentage of cytosine is 20% in a double standard DNA and you have to calculate the percentage of adenosine plus thymine. We know that in DNA guanosine is always equals to cytosine. So if cytosine is 20% then guanosine will be 20%. So out of 100, 20 plus 20 or 40% is guanosine plus cytosine. So 100 minus 40 that is 60% is adenosine plus thymine. You can also calculate the percentage of adenosine and thymine separately. We know that adenosine is always equals to the percentage of thymine. So 60 by 2 or 30% is adenosine and 30% is thymine present in this DNA. The question why adenosine always equals to thymine and guanosine always equals to cytosine was actually solved by James Watson and Francis Kick. According to Watson and Crick, the DNA is a helical material and two sugar phosphate backbone run in opposite direction and thymine in one strand always base pair with adenosine on the other strand and guanosine always base pair with cytosine on the other strand and one complete turn is 3.4 nanometer and there are 10 bases present in one complete turn. So the distance between two adjacent base is 0.34 nanometer. So from this data, you can easily calculate the length of the DNA if you know how many bases are there. Here is one numerical problem. In this problem, the DNA is 152 nanometer long and you have to calculate the how many turns it contains. We know that in BDNA, 3.4 nanometer is equal to 1 turn. So in 152 nanometer, there is 152 by 3.4 or 44.70 turns are there. And in another problem that appeared in gate examination, 15,000 base pair double standard BDNA, 70% of purines are adenosine bases. Then you have to find out 
the total number of hydrogen bonds present in this DNA. We know that the 70% of 15,000 base pair of DNA, that means 1050 bases, are adenosine. So, there is 1050 thymine residue is also present. And we know that between adenosine and thymine, there are two hydrogen bonds. So, number of hydrogen bonds between adenosine and thymine are 1050 into 2, that is 2100 hydrogen bonds are present and remaining 450 are guanosine plus cytosine and in between guanosine and cytosine there are three hydrogen bonds so number of hydrogen bonds in guanosine plus cytosine is 1350 so total number of hydrogen bonds are 3450 imagine chromosome number one of human is 249 into 10 to the power 6 base pair so it is around 8.5 centimeter long then how can 46 chromosomes fit into a nucleus that is only 6 to 10 micron in size. In order to fit into this compartment, DNA is compacted gradually. The first order of compaction is called nucleosome model or bead on string structure. A positively charged protein called histone play important role in chromatin structure. Around 146 base pair of BDNA make 1.65 turns around a single histone core. Histone core particles is a dimer of these subunits. Another histone protein called H1 seal the end of the DNA turns to organize additional 40 to 60 base pair of the DNA that linked next nucleosome. So in total 200 base pair BDNA is coiled in a single nucleosome. Now in this problem we will observe how many fold it is compacted in nucleosome. Here length is 25 nucleosome is 40 nanometer. We know that when BDNA is fully stretched 10 base pair is 3.4 nanometer. So 200 base pair is 68 nanometer and in fully stretched condition the size of the one nucleosome is 68 nanometer. For 25 nucleosome it is 1700 nanometer but after compaction it becomes only 40 nanometer so the degree of compaction is 42.5 fold so that's all if you like this video don't forget to subscribe my channel like share and you can comment and thanks for watching